Uh, my name is Anita Fowler. I am the president of the Carbon Copies Foundation, and it, that is an organization whose vision is an expedited future where whole brain emulation benefits humanity and individuals. So, developing whole brain emulation technology is certainly not for the faint of heart. Uh, but what it does do is it sets a clear goal for the neuroscience and neuroengineering communities to uncover the mysteries of the brain and how we work as individuals, as well as unlock secrets that may assist in medicine, and perhaps even improve quality of life and extend personal experience. Now, humanity has struggled uh, since the dawn of time in history. You know, hunger, illness, uh, disparities in depression, and of course, death. Uh, I believe that these things need not always be inevitabilities for any one of our species. But beyond these ancient and individual struggles, we are also faced with newer problems uh, that challenge our entire species as well as individuals. Um, and I believe this technology may pose solutions or at least ways of coping. So climate crisis, nuclear winter, and what brought many of you here today, uh, existential risk brought on by unchecked, unfriendly, or unaligned AGI. We need a way to survive. And uh, as individuals and as a whole species, we need to survive, and more than that, we need to thrive. Now, humanity has been precocious. <laughs> we have dared to create things that we don't fully understand, uh, much less control, and often this is at risk to ourselves as well as the systems that we're part of. And humanity is also precious. The source of subjective experiences such as curiosity, wonder, compassion, and love. We are courageous creatures who are driven to explore the stars and to strive to understand the scope and extent of reality and ourselves. And we are something to protect something worth protecting. So today, uh, we're gonna grapple with some tough topics. We are going to dive into engineering challenges and unanswered scientific questions of tremendous difficulty. Uh, we will address ethical dilemmas so far unknown to our species. Um, we are going to acknowledge dangers that face humanity as well as the risks we take in trying to solve them. And I urge all of you to do so with courage. So together, we'll dare to look at these problems that face humanity straight on, uh, look at these scientific and engineering challenges that may well be more complex and tougher than rocket science. But just as the problems that have faced humanity for millennia are great, and just as the problems that face us in the modern day are great, <coughs> so must we rise to the occasion. So, um, among the themes that come up time and time again when our organization discusses the ethics or the success criteria of whole brain emulation development and implementation are those of agency and self-determination. And over the years, we have heard countless uh, messages of hopelessness and fear when it comes to the risks and dangers and difficulties posed to humanity and individuals. Now these threats also pose opportunities for some of the greatest exercises in self-determination. To refuse to succumb to fear in the face of difficulty and instead rise to the occasion, even when the chances seem low, even when the challenge feels impossibly hard, and even when despair threatens in poignant waves. So I invite you to join me in saying no to giving up and to say, yes, <laughs> I will test the odds and I will work on this hard thing. Yes, I will uh, explore and grow and challenge the extent of my creativity and resolve. And yes, I will test and iterate and test and iterate over and over again until I reach an actual limit or until I succeed. Because survival is worth it. Humanity is worth it, our friends and family are worth it, and I am worth it. So, let us meet this challenge bravely. Um, instead of feeling discouraged in the face of those who would ask why when uh, faced with difficulty, uh, 
let us gather our strength and respond back. Why not try? Uh, if nature provided us bodies that are too fragile to shoot for the stars and brains that struggle to really understand the extent of reality and interact with each other, let us uh, accept the start that nature provided and use it to build ourselves better ones. So thank you all for joining in to enthusiastically explore building whole brain emulation. Thank you especially to Allison and Anders for making this event happen and all the organizers along the way. Um, I am really looking forward to discussing uh, a number of things this weekend, but among those are uh, really diving into those unanswered scientific questions. So what we're calling the translation bottleneck, what Anders mentioned, you know, how do we get from all this beautiful structural data to actual working accurate models? Um, additionally, those uh, uh, ethical dilemmas discussed and just understanding more of the drivers and justifications for pursuing this technology. Uh, so there are links to surveys here about yeah, the, the concerns, um, why build the technology, feasibility, those sorts of things. Um, there is actually a project plan um, in mind for starting to tackle some of those translation problems. What, what's the hard science that we need to do to figure out um, you know, these, these really good, accurate uh, structural models and, uh, er, sorry, functional models. Um, and then lastly, building an ethical framework, which I've heard coming up a few times. As this is something we definitely want to work more on. So there are links to more one-pagers <laughs> and to project plans, um, surveys, all of that. And I am just so thrilled uh, to be working on whole brain emulations with all of you and to get to work. Thanks so much. I will also ask you for your challenge uh, in a second, but we probably have time for two minutes if you can. Okay. Any questions, concerns, controls? <coughs> okay, well then. Oh, I guess. <coughs> yeah, in the, in the document uh, you mentioned things like the calcium uh, imaging uh, and mm. setting up that feedback loop uh, mm -hmm. in the science of moment. I think that's super important. It just got me that, okay, what else do we have besides calcium imaging? Maybe we should look at even, can one develop more tools like that? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that, that those, uh, really there, there have been improvements to uh, deep, deeper, at least, imaging technologies. You know, there's fMRI and then I think it's like uh, particle imaging as well that can look in vivo into larger brains. But I would be really open to exploring um, a diff additional like in vivo imaging. Like obviously we need to start with like neural arrays and organoids and in culture uh, that may be easier with the imaging technology we have. But as we get to more complex, bigger brains, obviously we're going to have to get better. Yes. So I'm wondering about um, how we communicate this to sort of the broader scientific community because we're obviously a very unique group in that we really resonate with all the things that you just said and you know we really have this big vision for the future but not everyone shares that and I mean I've noticed this in my you know daily interactions with people in the wider world and even even scientists I mean most scientists don't really believe in this the way we believe in it and I, I guess my my question is how do we motivate people how do we drive sort of the the societal change that will need to happen to scale this kind of project? That's a great question. Um, I mean, I think Ken and Randall have been dealing with this for, you know, 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> like, how do, we, how do we push this into more mainstream science? Um, and I think that there are going to be a, a lot of different directions that are going to have to be taken. It won't be just one thing. Um, uh, one thing Ken mentioned <coughs> the other day is just, you know, saying, you know, some people say this can't be done. You know, we don't know anything about neuroscience. We don't know anything, and you know, pull out from the people who have been working on this to say, actually, we know a ton of stuff, and here's all the things that we could do. And it's also a shift, perhaps, in goal setting, um, because so much of computational neuroscience is looking at more general models that aren't looking at uh, individual tissue or structure, and it's like, okay, well, that gives us some ideas that are very general, but it doesn't tell us anything about real brains, functioning, uh, individual, um, 
uh, organisms or you know anything that's patient specific. Now, not to say that no neuroscientist is looking at it, but it, it's definitely not the commonplace. And to look at it as more building, you know, patient specific models, patient specific prostheses, these sorts of things, I think will help to change the conversation. That's great.